Denver Post. Hey, Michael, good to see you. Uh, Mike was just pretty candid that, that he needs to be a lot better, a lot more physical, a lot more aggressive um, after watching the film. How pleased are you to see that response that, that he's taking the ownership and accepting that after after breaking down the film from game four? Yeah, I mean, I think it's not just Michael, it's our entire team. Um, you know, I, I was telling him the whole game every time out, huddle, we're not playing hard enough, or we're not playing physical enough. Um, said it after the game and before we started the film session that I took us through today, I asked him one more time. I said, you guys tell me these, these clips I'm about to show you will speak for themselves, but why, why, why did we lose game four? Why did we get blown out? And almost to a man, you know, everybody says we were soft. So, you know, you, you love when your, your team is willing to look itself in the mirror uh, and own, own up to that. Obviously disappointing that it happened. Uh, funny, Tim Conley and I were talking today about how such a weird playoffs, uh, unlike any I can remember, in terms of the sheer number of blowouts that are happening in the East and West. Um, that doesn't make it any easier to accept, but uh, it's been happening everywhere you look. Uh, as regarding Michael, obviously, I told him and the team today, he, I think, game one, Mike, he had 21 shots. Uh, game two, it was like uh, 14. Game three, 11. Game four, three. Uh, so, yes, my job as a head coach is to help Michael Porter. But I also told him he has to help himself, uh, being a lot more physical. Uh, Norman Powell is doing a good job. Give him credit. But uh, Michael's got to be a lot more aggressive, a lot more physical himself. Uh, he's got to get on the glass. He's a much better rebounder than he's shown. Um, so uh, we, we understand where we failed two days ago in game number four. And the areas, the intangibles, where we have to be a lot better. And uh, I expect us to be that. Brian Blackburn, Denver Stiffs. Coach, obviously talking about the physicality a lot and making sure to, to just be better with that in game five. How much of it is more just defensive discipline, finding ways to, to match the, the Blazers pick and roll scheme and making sure that they aren't breaking coverage as easily as they did? Well, you know, uh, I think going into this series, I, I, I just talked nonstop about the three-point defense. And once again, I think that that continues to improve. I mean, 19 threes in one, uh, 16 in game two, 14 in game three, and down to 12 in game four. Uh, so I think we did a really good job in a lot of areas. Uh, unfortunately, you know, transition is not a play call that we cover. Uh, it's not a play you can walk through. They had 23 transition points. Uh, Norman Powell was a big part of that. He had eight by himself of his 29 points, but eight of their 23 were Norman Powell. Um, they had 10 points to the roller. That was pick and roll. That was handoff related. Uh, and the reality is in, in our two wins, uh, they're averaging three points to the roller. In our two losses, they're averaging close to 10 points to the roller. Uh, so we didn't meet the roller. We were late. We were on the outside looking in. Uh, when they did catch it and we were there, we were not physical enough uh, and Nurkic capitalized. So uh, we did some decent things with the pick and roll and their play calls, but it was the other areas where we really struggled. And, you know, Nurk and Norman Powell were terrific in game number four. Mike Singer, Denver Post. Hey, Michael, uh, Mike said you guys had a really good practice, high energy practice. What, uh, what did you guys work on, and did it include some of those uh, famous physicality drills that you guys love from last year? Yeah, we, uh, we put on some football. We asked the Broncos to drop off some helmets, so we, uh, we put the helmets and pads on, and we just, uh, you know, we just did some tackling drills for half an hour. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's, you can't do physicality drills right now, uh, and I know you were asking that question uh, sarcastically, uh, but seeing the film, I think, was the most important part of practice. Uh, we can talk about it. You can talk about it. I think a lot of our players had already watched the game in their minutes, but showing it, demanding more, showing this is why we were soft. This is how we were soft. These are areas where we didn't work hard enough. When uh, Monte Morris shoots a pull-up two, and literally everybody on the court stands there and watches, and we don't get back and we give up a layup, you know, those, those clips are – unacceptable and they speak volumes. 
once we got into practice, it was working on some of our coverages, some of their high volume plays and the plays that have given us trouble. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you what those were. Uh, we also worked on our offense. Our offense was horrendous. You know, we, we were not very good on defense, but I thought that was by far our worst game offensively. Too much random offense. We didn't get organized. Our spacing was poor. We didn't screen uh, and we didn't help each other out. So uh, we worked on the offensive execution. Um, and I, I think our guys understood, all right, walking out of here, it's two to two. We have home court advantage back. We went there and got a win, which we needed. And now we have to be a lot better in game five tomorrow night in front of our great fans. Christos Saltas, SDNA Greece. Hello, coach. Hope you're doing well. What do you need to do on, on game five to be the aggressors? Because you mentioned the, the physicality. What do you need to do to be the aggressors in game five? And setting the tone from the first minute of the game. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think if, if you look at this series, I, for me, I'm always uh, looking at the wins and losses, try to really understand the numbers and what jumps out when we win, what jumps out when we lose. Uh, so when you talk about how we will be the aggressor, um, we played side to side. We played east-west. We didn't get to the basket. We didn't attack. We didn't put any pressure on their defense. And our two wins in this series were averaging close to 29 free throw attempts which is one of the tops in the NBA in the playoffs. And at two losses, we're averaging 15 free throw attempts. That's a huge disparity. Uh, and our wins and losses, uh, being aggressive defensively, we had three deflections in game number four. Three, that's pitiful. Uh, we had only five in game number three. We should be getting 12 to 15 deflections a night. Active hands, that shows that you're aggressive, that you're flying around. Uh, we did have a lot of contests. We did have a lot of loose balls recovered, but... Uh, aggression is not just on offense, it's also on defense. So much more activity in the passing lanes, much more aggressive in terms of meeting the roller early, being physical when we meet the roller, and offensively getting out, running, playing with pace, attacking the basket instead of playing on the perimeter uh, side to side. Leonardo Torres, El Comercio, Peru. Hi, Coach. It's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Hope you are well. Coach, the team has been characterized by resilience and overcoming challenge. What does the team need to improve on defense for Game 5? And specifically, what does MPJ need to improve? Well, I think the biggest takeaway, Leonardo, from, uh, from Game 4, as we head into Game 5 tomorrow night, is, is transition. You know, once the shot is taken, we have to be much more committed to getting back, allowing 23 transition points in the game to a team that is not known as a running team is unacceptable. That's where your defense starts. When the shot is taken, getting back with urgency, pointing, talking, matching, finding their shooters, stopping the ball. And we had so many examples of when we got back, we just didn't talk to each other. So two guys were guarding one player, leaving somebody wide open. So that, that's where our team defense has to start. Uh, it has to end with a defensive rebound. Uh, we have to make sure we're giving them one shot. They only had four offensive rebounds, which is a good number, but that's the beginning and end of your defense. You know, for Michael Porter, for everybody else, uh, can you guard the ball and contain on the perimeter? Can you have great KYP discipline? Is that guy a right-hand driver, a left-hand driver? Is he going to use his shot fake? Can you defend without fouling? Uh, but ultimately, it comes down to the intangibles. We lost game four because we did not play hard enough or aggressive enough compared to them. Their desperation was apparent from the jump ball and ours was not. Well, tomorrow night, I expect a much different effort and mindset and approach from our players. All right, coach, we got time for one more. We're gonna end with Ryan Blackburn from Denver Stiffs. Coach, it seems like we've, we've asked about Will Barton pretty much every single press session for you. So I, I get it if you don't want to answer this, but over the past couple of days, has he progressed in the way that you think that he may be able to go during the rest of the series or not? I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Will you really think I was going to say that? I don't want to talk about that. Um, so Will Barton uh, was able to participate in all of practice today. Obviously, we didn't do anything live. Uh, I've been talking to our, our training staff. Uh, he's definitely improving. Um, I'm not a trainer. I'm not a doctor. There are certain, 
items on our checklist that need to be cleared before he's cleared to, for him to resume playing in the series. Uh, and he's just not there yet. Uh, when is that going to happen? I, I really have no idea. I just know when I watch Will work out, when I watch Will in practice, when I talk to him, I think he's definitely getting closer. He's moving in the right direction. But it's a matter of him kind of um, allowing our training staff to say, you know what, check, he's done these last few things, and we feel good about releasing him to play in this series. Trust me, it has nothing to do with Will Barton wanting or not wanting to. He wants to play. Uh, I think uh, I've been overly impressed with Jamal Murray, but he didn't travel to Portland. But Will Barton, P.J. Dozier, JaVale McGee, guys that are injured and not playing or healthy and maybe not playing, just their engagement, what they're seeing, what they're talking to their teammates about. Uh, I'm asking them what they see because they're out there. They played against these guys before. And all, all those guys have been tremendous in terms of just their engagement, their approach, and their passion to help this team in any way they can. Uh, but I, I think I'm not even sure what Will's official status is for tomorrow night, but um, I do not see him playing in game number five. Can't rule out game six or seven, uh, and hopefully we can get him back at some point. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, thank you.